so, um, wow. Over a thousand subscribers. Before I get into this, I just want to say thank you for the support in my last video. I didn't expect it at all, and I'm just surprised and happy that people overall liked the concept. The reception of that video has been a little overwhelming for me, but just know that I am glad that people seem to like the idea. This time, I'm having fun with more randomized Pokemon fusions, so it's back to the random Pokemon generator, and whichever two it gives me is what I'll be combining. First up is... Seal and Snivy. This one was... rough. Snakes and seals are such drastically different animals that I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them right off the bat. When it comes to fusions, I like when the Pokemon look like they're naturally blended together as opposed to taking bits and pieces of each Pokemon and sticking them together. You can just see me randomly sketch and scribble shapes and erase them over and over again because I had no idea what I was doing. Eventually, I stepped away from the tablet, took out a paper and pen, and just scribbled some shapes and lines, and eventually landed on a face that I liked. It finally gave me a starting point. I decided to stick with Snivy's head shape, but give it seal's underbite and horn. And instead of making Snivy's leaf collar literal leaves, I decided to make it like a fur collar to blend in with the rest of the body better. The forearms are basically just seal's flippers with pointed fingers, and I figured it didn't really need back legs. I considered vestigial ones, but it didn't look right. The last thing was the tail, and Seal and Snivy have fairly similar tail shapes. Since this was already so heavy on the Seal traits, I decided to give it Snivy's tail. In all that's left are the colors, and that's just an even mix of Snivy and Seal's colors, with a few liberties taken on the markings because I liked it, and CIV's complete. He turned out super cute, and I just want to hug him. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for the face because I love it so much. This is one of those designs that turned out way better than I imagined, and I'm probably going to say that it's one of the best things I've made all year. And if it's not the best, it's one of my favorites. Next up is Mammal Swine and Hoppip. And as weird of a combination as this is, I kind of had an idea. Like yeah, Mammal Swine's this huge, well, mammoth of a creature, and Hoppip's this tiny little floating cat plant thing, so you'd think it'd be hard to make them mesh together, but like, just put Mamoswine's feature on a tiny body. That's it. I basically just started by drawing this real cute tiny version of Mamoswine and giving it a few features of Hoppip, specifically the tail, the leaves, and the cat ears, and the eyes because they work better on this smaller, cuter figure than Mamoswine's angry eyes. Other than that, the face is all Mamoswine, the pig snout, the tusks, the face markings, and eye mask, and even the under eye bags. Since Mamoswine's a pig mammoth hybrid and Hopip is very, very pink, I figured the main body can just be pink to lead into the pig look. I'm also pulling in some of the tans and browns from Mamoswine and blending them with Hopip's pink so the colors look better together. And with that, Mamopip's complete. This thing is just obnoxiously cute, like, that's what I was going for but still. This is one of the two fusions that I was worried about tackling because both of these Pokemon are so completely different in design, height, stature, but after figuring out I could use Hopip's color scheme to drive the design, then this really started to flow. Speaking of designs I was worried about tackling, the second one was the one I'm talking about now, Registeel and Lantern. Registeel's a massive metal golem, and Lantern is an anglerfish, so this design should blend together swimmingly. Which, when I realized I could make this thing submarine-based, then yeah, they did blend. Very swimmingly. Pun very much intended. When I say there's not really anything between Registeel and Lantern that lend to making a cohesive design, I mean it. Mammal Swine had the pig inspiration that went well with Hopip's colors. Seal and Snivy have similar tail shapes. Reggie Steel and Lantern have nothing. I guess red eyes, but that's it. Using Lantern as the base to make a submarine-shaped creature was the best bet. 
Instead of Lantern's yellow mask, I decided to turn the face into a sort of light panel that has the seven dots on Registeel's body. Two of the dots are larger and serve as the main eyes, while the other five line up in a zigzag between them. I kind of wanted to make the flippers sort of shaped more like Registeel's arms and hands just to have it look a little more like it, but I started to detail that out and didn't like how it looked, so I just made it more fin or flipper shaped. At this point, I figure that since the body is so heavy on the lantern influence, then the colors will be heavily Registeel based. And with that, here's Lantasteel. I absolutely do not normally draw robots or mechanical objects, so, you know, for not being as comfortable with the subject matter, I think I did a good job. Sure, I wish I knew how to blend them together better, but yeah, for what it is, it's not that bad. And last but not least, the last Pokemon I randomized were Toad School and Lampent. Let me just say, Lampent and Chandelure based fusions are some of the best things. So even though I didn't have a single idea of what I was going to do jumping into this, I knew that no matter what, it was probably going to look pretty cool by the end. Or you know, this is wishful thinking and I'm just hoping that it looks cool. The colors are definitely going to do a lot of heavy lifting for sure. Toad School and Lampent kind of have similar body structures already, so there's not much that needed to be done with the shape of the body. Lampent's lid can easily become a mushroom cap, and I know all of Lampent's flames are inside of its face, but I just wanted to be self-indulgent with them and have the top of the cap open so the fire could spill out. I just thought it looked cool, and it does. The body has a bit of Toad School's wavy mushroom shape, and the limbs are a sort of a mix between Toad School's noodle legs and Lampent's arms. They are arms, right? Anyways, the last thing is just to add color. I decided to temper the dark gray of Lampent with Toad School's tan. I wanted some of Toad School's palette in here, but with the blue fire and the purple under the cap, the tan stood out too much. With that, Toad Spent is complete. I really wanted to try and add in that glass look that Lampent has on the face, and I think I got close. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. It's a bit weird, but like, I think most things would turn out awkward when mixed with Toad School. I've got to say that fusions are one of the best exercises for me stretching my creative muscles. It's even better that these are randomized. A lot of these are Pokemon I just barely think about, let alone draw. If you ever feel kind of creatively stuck somewhere, I'd suggest giving it a try. It doesn't even have to be Pokemon. Maybe find a random animal generator or a character generator from a different series or something and take the first two or more, if you're daring things it gives you and roll with it. You never know what you could make. I'm making random Pokemon fusions my self-indulgent series. I will absolutely probably make one of these every few months or so. So if you'd like to see more of these or anything else I'll cook up in the future, why not subscribe? It really helps out. And you can check out my art on other socials listed here and linked below. I know I've been a bit quiet on them, but I do still use them, I promise particularly Instagram and Blue Sky right now. And that's the end of this. Again, thank you for all the support on my previous upload. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next month for something new.